On July 11th and 12th, 2022, humanity stepped into the future. The James Webb Space Telescope, a flagship deep space observatory that can gaze into the depths of space, released its first scientific images, revealing the universe in an unprecedented light. Since then, the whole scientific community has been constantly surprised by how the telescope is revealing the missing pieces of the universe in the distant past. Look at breathtaking images taken by James Webb. We see a lot of galaxies that are simply too massive to exist, black holes that have grown too large too soon, strange emissions from the dawn of time, and tiny galaxies that house monster black holes. All of them are just beyond what's possible. And that's also where the trouble comes in. Once again, cosmologists were confronted with observations that are impossible to explain according to our best model of how the universe evolved. Not enough time had elapsed to have brought together that amount of matter and turned it into this many stars. The universe at this time simply had not existed long enough for black holes to bulk up to a billion solar masses. Thus, based on our general understanding of how galaxies and black holes form and grow, the supergiant old structures captured by James Webb is just should not exist. At the time, scientists argued that the scenario posed a serious challenge to cosmic history that cosmologists have yet to unravel. So, what do the new James Webb images really show? Does the conventional understanding of how the universe works need to change? Or may the universe actually be twice as old as scientists suspect? Join us as we dig deep into how ancient, gigantic structures captured by James Webb could remake all cosmic rules. One of the most common misconceptions of the Big Bang Theory pertains to its very definition. Rather than being a theory of the universe's origin, it's a theory of what happens after the moment of creation. For most of the past 2,500 years, the universe was believed to be timeless and unchanging. Stars twinkled forever. They were not born. They did not evolve. They did not die. They did not even change their positions in space relative to each other. The dawn of modern astronomy came and went. Though beliefs around the movement of stars changed, and it was understood that local details might get altered in any random corner of the cosmos, the universe, as a whole, was considered permanently unchanging. Even Albert Einstein assumed that the universe now must look like the universe a trillion years in the past and future. Then, in 1928, discoveries by an American astronomer caused this surety to waver. Data from Edwin Hubble's telescope appeared to show that galaxies were, in fact, all rushing apart, avoiding one another as if they had the plague. Jesuit astronomer Georges Lemaitre drew a different conclusion from Hubble's observations. He believed that Einstein's theory of general relativity could be used to show that the galaxies weren't moving apart through space. On the contrary, it was space itself that was expanding, and the galaxies were simply being carried along with it. Lemaitre noted that the universe may have existed in a pre-expansion state. He described this state of the universe as a primeval atom, existing for immeasurable aeons before it was somehow set in motion. Alternative theories were floated by astronomers keen to resurrect a timeless picture of the cosmos. This included a model by Fred Hoyle, a British astronomer, who ridiculed the idea that the universe's expansion began all at once in what he deridingly coined a Big Bang. Then, in 1964, a truly revolutionary discovery was made. Two astronomers, Robert Wilson and Arno Pensius, were using a radio telescope designed to examine satellite communications. They encountered a strange phenomenon. When they directed their telescope at any point in the sky, they found a weirdly persistent microwave signal. There was no point in the sky from which this signal did not emanate. They began to look closely at the idea that the universe had been very different in the past than it was now. This was implied by Lemaitre's idea and had been picked up in the early 1950s by two physicists, Ralph Alpher and George Gamow. Alpher and Gamow were building a model of cosmic history 
where the universe began in an incredibly hot, dense state. Gamow's models predicted that, approximately 300,000 years after the universe started expanding, space filled with a particular kind of electromagnetic radiation as matter particles cooled and changed their interactions. Not only that, this radiation would persist forever, a kind of fossil light. And it was this fossil light that Wilson and Penzias inadvertently picked up in their radio telescope. All the pieces of the jigsaw were perfectly slotting together. Wilson and Penzias had made an insurmountable breakthrough. The universe did indeed have a history. It had once expanded from a type of primeval atom, and it had continued to expand since. In doing so, it had left behind traceable electromagnetic emissions, which silently polluted the sky, invisibly goading desperate researchers, waiting to be found by technology that was advanced enough. This discovery, known in scientific circles as cosmic microwave background radiation, established cosmology as a science and the Big Bang theory as the foundation for all explorations of cosmic evolution. Since then, observations have further supported its veracity and more details have bulked out the theory. And with these, the James Webb Telescope enters the story. To be a successful theory of cosmic evolution, the Big Bang must explain all aspects of how we got from back then to now. How did that transition occur? When and how did the cosmos start to form all the structures we see today? When did the first stars form? And when did the first galaxies form? Using ever more powerful supercomputers to simulate cosmic history and ever bigger telescopes to test the results of those simulations, researchers have developed a remarkably complete story. One of the most important aspects of that story is how stars and black holes began forming before galaxies did. The explanation for this is termed hierarchical structure formation, a sub-theory, if you like, of the Big Bang. Smaller structures like stars form first, it says, which then collect to form larger structures like galaxies. Many of this sub-theory's predictions were confirmed by the Hubble Space Telescope, which could look back to the era of galaxy formation. But Hubble's telescope had limitations, and astronomers needed to push back even further in time. Then, the recent years along came James Webb, a powerful space telescope was built to see the first generation of stars emerging just a few hundred million years after cosmic expansion began. Excited astronomers watched and waited for the telescope to confirm their predictions, and then it didn't. Instead of showing the formation of just a few small stars, which would satisfy the timeline of the hierarchical structure formation theory, the telescope is now sending back data that poses serious difficulties for the modern creation myth. As it looked deeper into space, the telescope revealed anomalies that challenged long-held prejudices about the origin and development of the universe, and shedded a brilliant light on profound and important scientific and philosophical questions. Indeed, you see galaxies taken by James Webb had existed far before anyone had expected them to. In other words, somehow the universe is building galaxies earlier and faster than our theories predict. And this was no minor discrepancy. The finding is akin to parents and their children appearing in a story when the grandparents are still children themselves. Another way to imagine, it's like going to a nursery to visit your newborn and finding a room full of teenagers. And that's really disturbing, to say the least. So, what did this mean for the history of the universe? Frankly, Webb's discovery could have significant implications for cosmology as it implies that current theories about the formation and evolution of galaxies could be incorrect or incomplete. To explain the existence of these galaxies, scientists may have to revise models of the universe's evolution and galaxy formation processes. One possibility is that these massive galaxies formed differently from the galaxies closer to us. For example, there may have been an unknown mechanism until now that allowed the formation of massive galaxies in a short period of time. Another possibility is that these galaxies are the result of exceptionally rapid mergers between smaller galaxies in the early universe, 
which would also require a revision of current models. In any case, the discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope represents a significant advancement in the study of cosmic evolution and galaxy formation. This finding is likely to prompt astronomers to develop new theoretical models and seek more observational evidence to better understand the history of the universe and the properties of these enigmatic distant galaxies. But note that the impossible massive galaxies were not an isolated incident. There have been other recent occasions in which the evidence behind science's basic understanding of the universe has been found to be alarmingly inconsistent. Take the matter of how fast the universe is expanding. This is a foundational fact in cosmological science, the so-called Hubble constant. Yet scientists have not been able to settle on a number. There are two main ways to calculate it. One involves measurements of the early universe, such as the sort that the web is providing. The other involves measurements of nearby stars in the modern universe. Despite decades of effort, these two methods continue to yield different answers. At first, scientists expected this discrepancy to resolve as the data got better. But the problem has stubbornly persisted even as the data have gotten far more precise. And now, new data from the web have exacerbated the problem. This trend suggests a flaw in the model, not in the data. Two serious issues with the standard model of cosmology would be concerning enough but the model has already been patched up numerous times over the past half century to better conform with the best available data. Alterations that may well be necessary and correct, but which, in light of the problems we are now confronting, could strike a skeptic as a bit too convenient. Physicists and astronomers are starting to get the sense that something may be really wrong. It's not just that some of us believe we might have to rethink the standard model of cosmology, we might also have to change the way we think about some of the most basic features of our universe, a conceptual revolution that would have implications far beyond the world of science. After all, while stunning observations made by James Webb pose serious challenges to our standard model of cosmology, it's also great news. This is what should happen in science. New data should challenge our theories and force us to confront false assumptions we hadn't even known we'd made. The James Webb Telescope has done that for cosmologists. And as more data pours in, there are no doubt going to be a lot of happy, sleepless nights as scientists try to understand exactly what the telescope is telling them about the early cosmos. And while astronomers grapple with James Webb's discovery of early galaxies, our universe is expanding at an ever-accelerating rate. This is a phenomenon that all theories of cosmology agree upon, but none can fully explain. For this observation to fit with the main theory of cosmic evolution, physicists assume that the universe is filled with an enigmatic substance dubbed dark energy that drives the expansion. But this elusive form of energy does not manifest itself in any other way, leading many astrophysicists to question its existence and explore the possibility of an alternative cause for the universe's expansion. In a new study published in the Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics, scientists proposed the idea that the expansion of the universe may be driven instead by constantly merging with other universes. According to lead study author Jan Ambjörn, a physicist at the Copenhagen University, the merging with so-called baby universes and that a model for this might fit the data better than the standard cosmological model. While the idea of multiple universes interacting with ours isn't new, this study develops a mathematical model to explore the hypothetical impact of this on the evolution of our universe. The researchers' calculations showed that merging with other universes should increase the volume of our universe, which could be perceived by our instruments as an expansion of the universe. The scientists also computed the rate of expansion of the universe using their theory and their calculations more closely fit with observations of the universe than the traditional standard cosmological model, the researchers said. The author's theory also addresses the problem of cosmological inflation, the mysterious super-rapid expansion 
that occurred in the early moments of the universe. Physicists have previously proposed that this expansion was caused by the inflaton, a hypothetical field that drove ultra-rapid expansion in the first milliseconds after the Big Bang. But in the new study, the authors suggest this super-rapid early expansion could have been caused by our young universe being absorbed by a larger universe. They wrote in their paper that the fact that the universe has expanded in a very short time invites the suggestion that this expansion was caused by a collision with a larger universe. That is, it was really our universe which was absorbed in another parent universe. Since we have presently no detailed description of the absorption process, it is difficult to judge if such a scenario could take place in a way that would actually solve the problems inflation was designed to solve. But one interesting aspect of such a scenario is that there is no need for an inflaton field. The scientists suggested that after being absorbed, our newly enlarged universe then continued to collide with other baby universes and incorporate them as well. Although the author's theory enables us to solve some important problems of modern cosmology, only observational data can validate their hypothesis. Many experiments are currently being carried out to study the properties of the microwave background, so scientists may be able to answer these fundamental questions in the near future. As Yoshiyuki Watabiki, a physicist at the Tokyo Institute of Technology said, our late-time expansion of the universe is different from the standard cosmological predictions, and we believe that observations from the Euclid Telescope and the James Webb Telescope will settle which model is best describing the present-time expansion of our universe. Closer to our home, astronomers have just observed powerful glitches in a highly magnetic neutron star or magnetar near the heart of the Milky Way. These glitches appear to have massively accelerated the star's spin speed. Plus, fascinatingly, the phenomenon that helps slow down the neutron star, which also known as a dead star after these glitches, could help reveal the star's interior. Understanding what goes on within a magnetar may finally unveil how these strange bodies launch what are known as fast radio bursts, or FRBs. FRBs are mysterious and fleeting pulses of light that can get bright enough to briefly outshine the light of an entire galaxy. Scientists know these extreme, few second-long pulses exist, but no one has been able to pinpoint precisely why they exist. The Discovery Team studied a magnetar that's considered the most active in our galaxy over the last decade, SGR 1935 plus 21, 54, or SGR 1935. It's located an estimated 30,000 light years away from Earth and was studied using the Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer, NICER, instrument aboard the International Space Station as well as the Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, New Star, Space Telescope. With these tools in hand, the team spotted two massive glitches associated with the magnetar that were separated by around nine hours and according to team member and assistant professor at Paul Sabatier, University in France, Sébastien Guillot. The glitches are abrupt changes in the rotation of the star. Each brief observation allows us to measure the rotation speed of the magnetar, and we noticed that suddenly the star was spinning faster than the previous observation. Glitches are commonly observed for pulsars and magnetars, but these are two of the largest ever seen. This magnetar usually spins just over three times per second, but the first glitch caused an increase in rotation speed. Then, the second glitch that occurred approximately nine hours later caused yet another speed increase, 100 times greater than the first. Chin Ping Hu, research lead and an associate professor at the National Changhua University of Education, said that, this slowdown occurred over a period longer than the duration of the glitches themselves. Exactly between the two glitches, SGR 1935 launched an FRB, and after both acceleration jumps, the neutron star somehow slowed back down to its normal rotation rate, leaving the team eager to explain both phenomena. Magnetars, like all neutron stars, owe their births to the deaths 
of once massive stars. After millions of years of burning hydrogen in their cores and converting it to helium, stars that are many times the size of the sun run out of this nuclear fusion fuel supply. The end of that supply also ends the outward energy flow coming from the core of the star, the force that had been supporting it against the inward force of its own gravity for so very long. As this cosmic tug of war ends, with gravity the clear winner, the outer layers of the star are blown apart in a powerful supernova explosion while the inner core collapses upon itself. This creates a stellar remnant that has between one and two times the mass of the sun squeezed into a sphere with a diameter of around 12 miles, 19 kilometers. This is a neutron star. Not only does this entire situation create neutron star matter so dense a teaspoon of it would weigh something like one billion tons, but like an ice skater drawing in their arms to spin faster, the rapidly shrinking radius increases the stellar remnant's spin rate. In fact, some neutron stars can rotate as fast as 700 times per second. The collapse also pushes together the magnetic field lines of the dying star, creating some of the universe's most powerful magnetic fields. There are neutron stars out there that boast a powerful magnetic field so intense, they qualify for their own category of celestial object those are the magnetars. The team behind this research theorizes that the return to normal speed for the magnetar, SGR 1935, is the result of a strong, ephemeral, and magnetospheric wind blowing from the star. Chin Ping Hu says this wind would carry away angular momentum that rapidly slows the star's rotational rate. As Guillot said, the idea is that the crust of the magnetar would crack under the torque forces at play. This cracking just under the surface of the magnetar releases a huge amount of energy that would locally heat up the surface, sending particles in the form of a plasma of ions and electrons at high temperatures into space at close to the speed of light. The team also thinks the same phenomenon that couples the neutron star's interior with its surface to cause this wind is responsible for the magnetar's X-ray emission being boosted. Potentially, it'd foster the right magnetic conditions for launch FRBs as well. Gilo added that the magnitude of glitches experienced by SGR 1935 could help scientists better understand the interiors of this magnetar and of neutron stars in general. For pulsars and magnetars, the changes in the rotation during glitches are thought to be linked to the presence of superfluid material, neutrons, that are not interacting with the rest of the crust and outer core of the magnetar inside the object. During the progressive slowdown of the magnetar, the superfluid material remains at the same rotation speed until the difference of rotation speed between the bulk of the magnetar and the superfluid material is too large. At this point, Guillot explained that the two components of the magnetar combine once more, generating the glitch in rotation, or in other words, the abrupt spin-up of the magnetar. The researcher explained that the next step in the process is to attempt to catch either this magnetar or another one in the Milky Way in the act of burping out an FRB. Anyway, we missed the exact moment of the FRB but SGR 1935 proves to be quite an active magnetar, and similar bursting activity will likely happen again, and hopefully, next time, we will catch it. The team's research was published on in the journal Nature. On Earth, meteorite hunters have just successfully recovered fragments of an asteroid that impacted Earth over Berlin, Germany, on January 21st, and the space rocks could be very rare indeed. The one-meter-wide asteroid, dubbed 2024 BXM-1, was spotted by NASA around 90 minutes before it hit Earth's atmosphere. It burned up upon impact, exploding and creating a fireball seen by observers across Europe. Following the event, on January 22, intrepid meteorite hunters were out searching for fragments of asteroid 2024 BX-1. One team that hit pay dirt was led by SETI meteor scientist Peter Jeniskens. The crew found the second and third fragments to be uncovered. 
Notably, fragments of this asteroid have been confirmed to be a rare space rock type that could help shed light on Earth's origins. Thus, studying the remains of asteroid 2024 BX1 might not just be important in understanding Earth's past, but also in safeguarding humanity's future. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.